Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. I was just sitting outside doing some work on the computer and realized it is time to move on with this umbrella planter. I mean, it just looks terrible. These Tillandsias that are in here, they've finished blooming. They're putting up all their little pups and everything which you can see in there. So I need to pull those out and put something more practical in here. They're very full. They kind of get in the way of the crank on the umbrella every single morning. The umbrella gets tilted because the sun comes up over the roof of the house. It's very blinding. I and mean, all that fun wispy foliage is always in the way. And either way, it's time to pull them out since they're done blooming. I'll handle what I'm going to do with those in the upcoming vlog, which will be like a video or two from now. What I've decided to do with this is to keep it very simple. Just gonna put a few succulents in this. Make sure it's nice and low maintenance, but still looks kind of cool. Okay, so one thing I really need to do before planting these up with succulents, I have some Sansevieria set over here just to the side that I'm gonna put in this. Need to drill some holes in the bottom. I already have a hole drilled in one, but with these being succulents, it's really important that water can move through these. I've got my drill here with a diamond tip right on there that can go right through the ceramic. I'm gonna keep my hose running right where I'm drilling. That's gonna keep water moving through so that the dust and whatnot doesn't collect. and to slowly work my way through. Very simple, nothing to it. It's really easy to drill through ceramics and glass and whatnot. Just need to do it slowly. So here I'm working on my potting mix. You can see there's a good amount of sand in there. There's some bark chunks. Still sort of clumpy and holding together more than I would prefer. So I'm going to add more sand to this, but a medium grit sand. Okay, so you see that the sand here, the pieces are a lot bigger. They're more chunky. It's not as fine. This is going to allow more air into the soil. I'm going to add a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean a lot more. I'm going to go ahead and blend this up and get planting. There we go. See that? Falling apart. It's going to be more airy, more oxygen can get to the roots. Hopefully going to encourage thicker, more sturdy root growth in theory. And hopefully you actually can see this. It's so sunny. I can't, can't even see my viewfinder. Let's move on. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about putting gravel in the bottom of these for drainage. Should be fine just as it is. The plants I'm putting in here really aren't even going to be watered very often. Okay, quick location change. Those shadows were just a little bit too hard to work with. Sorry about that. Okay, back to work. So, very simple. I have some of these small Sansevierias here. I picked these up from my local Lowe's. You can see they're actually surprisingly well rooted. I wasn't expecting that. I always like to have a good look at the potting medium that they're in and this is kind of peaty. Actually I think that's coconut. Coconut drains a lot better. It dries out a lot better so and it's much more environmentally friendly. So see I just barely loosen those roots up. It doesn't need anything extreme. And see one of the reasons I didn't want to go with a ton of plants to put in these is just because well there needs to be symmetry. These, there's one for each side of the umbrella and I want them to match or at least mirror each other. I'm making sure that I want the soil right where that white line is. See that white line? It needs to be right above that. Which means I put that hole a little bit too deep. Drop another one in right here. And I am planning on top dressing this with some large gravel. So having that white there isn't as big of a deal. The main thing is that it doesn't expose to too much air. I'm still gonna add a little bit more soil. Just a little. There we go, so that's better. So not very much of it's exposed anymore. Go ahead and put another one in on this side. This is what I'm gonna top dress this with. It's just Black River Pebbles. You can get them from a craft store. I just picked mine up from the hardware store. I'm just doing a thin layer right on top. Uh, that looks much better, doesn't it? I do think it's maybe a little bit too plain. The middle could use something. Oh, I have these bits of succulent here. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name of it. It's just an offshoot I pulled off from one of my Echeverias, and it is so easy to propagate these guys. Try not to touch the foliage too much. See when your fingers touch that, some of that powder comes off. I don't really want that. You can see how it's already happened in some of those spots. And then typically would let this dry a little while. This over here, these containers, they've been watered in. I'm not gonna be watering them again for a while. So there would be two options here. Option one, I can just, take it, set it right there, or I can actually 
take this and stick it down into the soil. Since the soil's wet and this hasn't had a chance to callus over and dry, I'm just gonna let it sit right there, just like that. And I did the same thing on the other side. There's this lovely out of focus pile of leaves here. And then all of these leaves, I can just lay these flat on top of some dry soil or gravel, wherever, and then over time, they'll put out some little roots and they'll put out little leaves. And then there'll be a whole bunch of brand new plants. Very simple to do. And then in just a couple of weeks when I've noticed that this piece right here, that stem has calloused over, I'll go ahead and pop that down into the soil. That that's it, very simple, super easy and simplistic, which I like. That's because I don't want anything that's too heavily detailed on the table because it just, it can come across as messy. In the past, I have put lavender in these, which was fantastic because who doesn't love having lavender like right in your face when you're sitting around? But ultimately with the umbrella and everything up above it, the light was a little bit too filtered and just got kind of messy over time. So I decided to go with plants that while they are succulent and they can take a lot more sun than people give them credit for, they'll be okay with getting a few hours of bright intense morning light and then filtered light from you know the umbrella throughout the rest of the day. And I'm not going to have to water this very often at all. Sansevierias are just super tough plants. They're really the perfect thing to put in a spot where you don't want something that's high maintenance. And I had toyed with the idea of doing something much more drastic and different from what I've done here. But I thought about instead of using these black pebbles that are in here, to instead put down some battery operated fairy lights on top of the soil and then cover it up with a translucent like sea glass or some type of tumbled frosted marbles or something. And then at nighttime, there'd be like a little sparkly show going on there. That would look really cool. But I didn't plan ahead and didn't buy the things to pull that off with. So for now, this is fine. And I actually, I like the contrast a lot with the dark stones against the blue on the pot. I think that looks nice. I was thinking that the Echeveria would stand out more, but really it blends into that pot like an awful lot. So maybe if this were white, that'd be a little bit different. I don't know. And really these umbrella planters, they're not even that common. It took me a couple years to even find this one. I don't see them around at the nurseries that often. So I don't know if this would be helpful to anyone because like I said, finding the little planters that go around the umbrella pole, not the easiest thing to do. At least not where I live, not at my nurseries. And tip, what's going on? Why won't you focus? I think the ripple of the fountain in the background's really <laughs> throwing off my, why, but stop it, behave. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it's the ripple from the fountain in the background, something just in autofocus was not liking things. Anyways, what I was getting ready to say is that typically I like to give the names of the plants and talk about their care and everything. So these were just labeled as mini Sansevierias. I can't say much about them. Now they look to me like what I often see as the Sansevieria Mikados, Fernwood, sometimes called Fernwood, Mikado, Fernwood, Mackie. The naming is all over the place. And then sometimes Cylindrica is coming up in search results, which it's, it's not a Cylindrica. Here's a Cylindrica. See, big difference. Sometimes when Cylindricas are smaller, they might resemble the mini one in the background a little bit more, but not this one. This I purchased as a Cylindrica. That's what it's labeled as. And I have seen Cylindricas that look fairly different from this. It hasn't been getting a ton of sun, so the striations and stuff in the foliage are a little bit different, but you can see sometimes these ridges are characteristic of a different type of Sansevieria. So again, labeling problems, I don't know. To see what happened is in my quest to figure out what type of Sansevieria these are that are back here, these miniature Sansevierias, I came across several articles that were just like debating the names of these different cylindricas and then this little Mikado, which may very well actually be a form of Sansevieria bucellaris. And that's where things get like really tricky and sticky. And I don't, I'm gonna go ahead and link the article. It's very, very, very informative. I'll put that down in the description. Feel free, offer up any knowledge you have on the naming and whatnot with the Sansevierias. It's really helpful to have plant names when it comes to talking about their care because not all Sansevierias are the same. There are some differences. But what I can tell you is I have grown these little mini Sansevierias as they were labeled before and they are super easy. They're a go-to of mine when I'm giving a plant as a gift to someone because they're just so easy to grow. Like the biggest way they get killed is being overwatered. So as far as care goes with this, I'm gonna make sure that this gets moved inside when temperatures start to drop below like 45, 50, or if it's gonna be below 50 for an extended period of time but still above freezing and temperatures kind of moist and wet. They're not gonna like that, they'll rot, so then I'd move them in maybe a little bit sooner. I'd prefer just to be safe to have them in when temperatures start to drop below 50, just to be safe. Like I mentioned, as far as lighting's concerned, these are gonna get some really bright, intense morning light, and then it's gonna be filtered throughout the rest of the day. Now with watering, I'm not going to water these very often at all. Maybe every couple of weeks, I'll just give them a little drink right around the plant. 
that's pretty much it. They don't need very much. But if temperatures are like skyrocketing and it's in the triple digits or near the triple digits and there's no moisture in the air, which would be very unusual for where I live. I'm in St. Louis, it's pretty muggy and humid here. If that were the case, it would be really dry, then I'll give them a little drink like once a week. Since they need to be rooted into these new pots here, then it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and give them a very small drink like once a week. It just isn't totally necessary because they're Sansevierias. Really, really, really sturdy plants. These will be very long lived as long as they don't get overwatered and they aren't exposed to too cold of temperatures. In the soil mix, there was just a little bit of tomato fertilizer. I like the high levels of calcium that's in there. It does help build stronger foliage and stronger roots. It's not so really necessary for Sansevierias. With my Sansevierias during the summertime, I water them about once a month. And then once like probably mid-September hits, I don't fertilize them again until springtime. I barely even water them again until springtime. Sometimes I don't water them again until springtime. Just kind of depends on the moisture and the atmosphere and everything for that particular fall and winter. That's why I thought these would be good candidates to have on the table. They're low maintenance. I'm not going to have to do much with them. There's not going to be water all over the place. I'm not even going to have to pick these up and take them somewhere else to water them. Like I said, I can just pour a little bit of water in around there. Same thing with the Echeveria done easy. If I do end up swapping out that gravel and doing that fairy light thing, it'll probably be in a vlog or I'll have it updated up on my Instagram. And all that social media is linked down below in the description of the video. Feel free to follow me. I'm by far the most active on Instagram, so that's more than likely where the update would be. I'm just real bad about using the other ones. I don't know why. Hey, and comment down below. Offer any tips, tricks, suggestions. There are so many ways, so many variations and things you could do with succulents in these to make it really cool. Like I said, I just wanted to keep it really simple. Partially because, like I mentioned, in the morning time I have to pull these out a little bit to turn that umbrella crank up there so that I can tilt the umbrella, and then in the afternoon I tilt it back, and so they get moved around a little bit. Oh, and on that note, that isn't one of the other reasons, other than just that it looks nice. One of the other reasons I do have gravel in here is to help support these guys. It'd be a minute until those take root and fill out and, like, are sturdy inside those containers. However, I have noticed with these little mini Sansevierias, I'm <laughs> kind of wrapping things up, just a last note here. They grow fairly quickly if you do water them more than you need to. That's why it's good to use a swell mix that drains very sharply and dries really quickly, so that the option is there to give them more light, give them more water. However, the soil does need to drought in between waterings. That's very important. And you'll get more growth that way. They'll grow a lot faster. Like I said, comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions. Check out that article, look up naming and whatnot. Let me know what you think as far as classification and whatnot. And as always, you know the YouTube thing, if you leave the video a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Helps the videos a lot and helps the channel. So thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell because I upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. All right, I know, nothing mind-blowing, but transformative looks a lot better than those Tillandsias, right? And as I mentioned, those Tillandsias, I'll do something with those in the upcoming vlog. I, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. <laughs> and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.